Hello and welcome to my channel, On the Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And let's find out what's been on the hook this weekend. Today is Monday, Giveaway Monday, so we'll be talking about that a little bit later. But grab a crochet project or a knit project and work on it while we're talking. So let me tell you what I've been up to. This weekend, I did something to my essential sweater and I want to show you how that came about. So join me in my craft room and I will show you what I've been up to. So here I am in my craft room walking over to show you those blocks that I think I've shown these before but I wanted to show them again. These are blocks that I bought from Amazon. They're called Knitting Block Set, nine mats and 100 T pins are already in the box, so you don't have to go find pins in order to block your sweater, or shawl, scarf, cowl, whatever it is. So those are the ones that I'm using. However, those are not, there's, they don't cover enough square footage, so I'm gonna have to buy some more. But today, I'm not gonna wait around. I am going to block my essential sweater. So here I am over at my handy craft table. And I'll show you this underneath. Somebody asked me about this. This is a fold-up craft table, and what you do is you fold this leg in that way, and the sides collapse. The, the the table is only about the table is about 10 to 12 inches wide, right here, from here to there, and the sides fold down this way on each side and you can push the table up against the wall there are rollers on there as you can see so I wanted to show you my sweater while I'm down here this is already pinned on the blocks now I didn't have room on the blocks for the bottom of the sleeve but it seems to be okay and if I need to block it later I'll just bring it down here and just block this much but right now it's pinned down and I have stretched the back, this is the back of the sweater, and the front is on the other side. The back neck of the sweater all the way down here, and I've stretched it two and a half inches from what it actually laid on the box to begin with. So I've pulled it and I've pinned it, as you can see, right there along one of the lines. So it's pretty tight. It's now you can't bounce a dime on it, I don't think, but <laughs> it is pretty tight. What I'll do here now is to spray it using this spray bottle. This is one I picked up at the drugstore. And it has a little bit of lavender oil in it. I put a couple of drops in there so it'll smell good. And I'm just going to spray the sweater down really well, make it pretty wet. And then I'll have to leave it down here for two or three days. But when I pick it back up and when it's dry, it should retain its shape. And that's what blocking is all about. Now being a crocheter, and one who always worked with acrylics, I rarely ever blocked anything. In fact, I never blocked anything until about five years ago. I'd always used acrylic yarn. So now that I've discovered wool and cotton and all these other beautiful yarns, I found that you really need to block them. If you want them to lay down correctly, you have to block. And all the girls who have been knitting for years and years and using wool yarn, they will tell you the same thing, that you have to block your sweater. But like the young lady said the other day, she wears her sweaters a couple times and then she blocks them because she's so excited to finish them that she doesn't want to give them up. So, okay, this is, this is, this is pretty wet. And I'm just going to pat it down so that the water maybe goes down to the other layer. I don't want to have to turn it over and block it again. But I'm going to make sure that it's pretty wet on top of everything is wet. I flattened down under the arms too. I felt like that was really bulky in there. So I flattened that out, stretched it out, and pinned it down. So maybe that won't be so bulky under the arm. Because I want to use this sweater pattern for the essential sweater. I want to use this sweater pattern for a summer sweater and maybe do a short sleeve. So I want to be sure that when I block it, it's going to hang right. And um, when I make it boxy, really big like this, that it will hang nicely, whether it's made from a size three yarn, which is kind of what this is. This is a very light four. So I can make the sweater with a, a DK or a sport weight or even a fingering weight and it'll look really nice. What I liked a lot about this particular pattern was the trim on the neck. I really like the way that looks with this particular yarn 
and then the trim on the cuff is also done in a different stitch than the actual cuff. So those are some of the things I really like about this sweater besides it's boxy and it's comfortable and it's very easy to make. So I wanted to show you this and now we'll go back to um, our office upstairs and see what's going on up there. So that's what I was working on this weekend and I'm actually wearing the essential sweater now that it's been blocked and everything is all dry and I wanted to show it to you because I haven't blocked a big wool sweater in a long time. I did not block my cobblestone sweater so that might be next on my list, I don't know, because it probably could use a block and it's wool so and so is this so I just wanted to show you how it came out now my idea to block was to lengthen the sweater and to make it have more drape not be so bulky under the arms and actually that is what happened I blocked it as I showed you in the video I flattened out the sleeves and now that it's been wet and dried it is so much softer and I know that y'all who block your sweaters um, as a matter of course always that that is what happens the, the wool settles down and the stitches actually look better than they did before they're much more even and they're a lot softer so um, I know I say don't block your sweaters unless you just have to but if it's wool, it's probably a good idea. This is partly acrylic, but it had enough wool in it to really uh, take on the blocking and turn out to be quite beautiful. The sleeves actually did very well, even though I didn't block from here down. The sleeves are much drapier underneath, as you can see. Look at that. Did not look like that before. <laughs> It was drapey, but it wasn't that drapey, and that's what I was going for because this is a boxy sweater. This is my boxy winter sweater called Essential Sweater, and the pattern is out there on my Etsy shop. But I want to back up and show this to you how it looks now. It is much longer. It was right about here, and I stretched it another three or four inches. So if you can see that in the back, it is not hiking up in the back like it was before. So I just wanted to show you that, what it looks like after you block the sweater. So my advice is to block if you can. And I will put a link to the blocking pads that I use. Now I went back out to Amazon and I couldn't find them, the specific brand, the, uh, the brand that I showed you in the video in my craft room. But I did order another box of what appears to be very similar, only they're, I think they're white with black lines. Not that that matters one bit to me. So I needed a few more blocks, so I went ahead and bought another box of blocks. And I think there are nine 12 by 12 blocks in there, and the push pins are supposed to be in the box. So I won't have to go and buy any of the T-pins that you pin the sweater or the article onto the pads with before you block. So this was made from ice yarns, and this is called Sail Winter. It is a 20 mohair, 25 wool, and 45% acrylic. So it's, and a little bit of polyamide in there, which is a little bit of nylon. Makes it very squishy and very wonderful to work with. But I did have one skein of this left over, and I haven't done anything with it. But I really like it. It's beautiful. I could maybe make a small cowl out of that. I'm going to put this up though for the summertime, spring and summer, and that will go in my winter stash. And maybe next year I'll pick it up and do something with it. But right now I'm not going to work with any more wool. I think I am done with the wool except for a couple of uh, projects that I have in the works now. And I'm going to show those to you here in a few minutes. But right now I want to show you two new project bags that my viewers have ordered from Joe Totes, which is my friend's business, and she does custom project bags. And these two viewers ordered these project bags, especially for them. They're made with the fabrics that the viewers uh, picked out, and I want to show you two of these because they're just so cute. I, I really wanted to show these to you, and the viewers said it was okay to show it 
before we shipped it out tomorrow. So I will give these back to Joe tonight at Bell's and she will ship them out tomorrow. This one goes to Tracy from Arkansas. Tracy ordered the Betty Boop bag. I love this bag. That is so cute. I love the colors, the blacks and the reds and the greens and Betty Boop was, you know, real popular back in the 50s, I believe but the fabric lives on and this is actually a very much a specialty fabric so um, joe must have had the center stash or the viewer ordered it i'm not sure how that went but the outside pocket has a red zipper it also has a very cute stitch marker hanging down let me show you that if i can get my finger behind it and all the colors of course match the fabric the inside of the pocket is done with a cherry and gingham print is so cute it matches the outside of the bag the zipper is red as well the straps are embroidered down the middle like all of her bags seem to be I don't know if they people order them that way or if she just puts that on there but the straps are embroidered the zipper tab is one of the squares from the fabric over here look that is so cute and on the other side which I didn't notice is a picture of Betty Boop so this is a very much a specialty bag, beautifully done by my friend. On the other side, on the outside, is another big pocket, and the pocket has a snap, and on the front is Joe's uh, signature medallion that she makes from uh, felt and beads, and they're all handmade, beautifully, beautifully done. Inside, the, the inside lining is a... Uh, linen color and the pocket inside is done with the Betty Boop fabric and a coordinating um, bias tape at the top another two pockets there on the other side and she's also put a stitch marker holder in here so you don't lose those stitch markers you can hook them right onto this little round ring and you don't lose those and it comes with a few already on there so you're all ready to go I love this bag I love this bag. I love all of her bags because they're so different and so beautiful. But that is going to Tracy from Arkansas. So Tracy, you'll be receiving this in the mail this week. The second bag is on an elephant theme and it is beautifully done. Again, it is going to Anna from Rhode Island. And Anna, you'll be receiving this this week probably. The straps, of course, are embroidered in a coordinating color. And this is the bag. It's so beautiful. The print is a, kind of an Indian elephant print. Very, very pretty. The coordinating fabrics are very nice as well. These two have two pockets on each end. And I think the other one did as well. Yes, this one has two pockets. One goes all the way down, and then the other one is on about halfway up. And on the other side, there are also two more pockets. That's how they were ordered, and that's how Joe made those. Now, here is Joe's signature medallion on this particular bag. Very, very beautiful. Very beautiful. I love those. They, are, they make the bag so special. And then there's a, a snap underneath and the big pocket on the front. Inside, this, this bag was ordered with a snap closure. And there's your snap closure. Inside is a really pretty zipper pocket that has a coordinating fabric inside. Isn't that beautiful? This has a zipper pull with a tassel at the end. So very, very cute. This also has a stitch marker ring built in. That's a very beautiful bag as well. It um, doesn't have as many pockets inside and Joe can make them custom. That makes them custom. This is the fabric on the other side and the two coordinating fabrics. Very beautiful. And she will allow you to pick your own fabric. So those were the two project bags I wanted to show to you today. And those will be going out to Anna and Tracy this week. So thank you for ordering from Joe. She does not have an Etsy shop yet, and I've been talking to her about that. You can email her. I'll put her email address down in the description box. And if you're interested, you can email her and start a conversation about your special project bag. Now, this video is partially about Knit Crate. I am not sponsored by Knit Crate at all, but I have been receiving their monthly subscription for probably about a year now. I love the quality of the yarn. It's usually something I really, really like. And so 
I received this on Saturday in my mailbox. It was probably out there on Friday. But I was surprised to see inside that Knit Crate is sponsoring Creative Grandma this month. She has picked out the yarns that actually were chosen to be in the boxes. And here is one of the yarns. And that is actually the one that she made on her channel. She made a scarf from that. And that is the one that I received in my box. And I'm pretty sure I went out and checked that this month. I wanted to be sure that I got that beautiful cream and pink yarn. Here's a picture of Glenda Winkleman. She is featured in the Inspirations book from Knit Crate this month. I know I am just so proud to know you, Glenda. That's awesome. Here are the three colors that Glenda picked out. The one called Flirt is the one that I received, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Sprout is the one with the more natural colors in it, and it's also a cream background, as well as Sky, which is the cream background, and blue speckles or blue coloring in there. So they're quite gorgeous. I love all three. And what I looked for was this pattern in the book, and it wasn't in there. So I went to Glenda's site, and she has the pattern there. So you can go out there, and it's a crochet pattern made with the flirt yarn, but quite beautiful. There are lots of patterns in here, some for socks. There are some crochet socks in here that are kind of cute. I don't make socks, but somebody out there might. Also in the box was a beautiful button, and you know how much I love buttons, especially large buttons. Look how large that is. It's quite beautiful, and the colors match the colors in the yarn. Now, I don't think I'll be using this button on this particular yarn, but I will be using it. It's called buttonmad.com, B-U-T-T-O-N-M-A-D.com, and incomparablebuttons.etsy.com, and that is apparently their... Etsy shop and it says giving employment to women in South Africa handmade fully washable buttons that is a wonderful gift that came in the knit crate box I love large buttons I love them I have quite a collection and I do use them on my cowls and on my scarves I sometimes will put one on there to allow me to leave the scarf alone and not keep fiddling with it so um, that is a beautiful button. I really, really like it. Thank you, Knit Crate, for that. Also in my box was a hank of the Audine Wools by Knit Crate. And look at, Creative Grandma has her logo right there on the yarn band. So cool. This is the hank of yarn. It is gorgeous. Just gorgeous. I can see why Glenda picked that. Let me show you what it looks like when it is wound uh, in a ball and that is, look how pretty that is I love the cream colored background instead of white I really like the cream and then the beautiful little specks of pink and lavender are just beautiful in there so I am glad that I received that one I really really like it look how beautiful that is so I of course couldn't resist since I um, balled up the yarn. I want to show you what I've done with it so far because I was so inspired I really wanted to make something right away with this beautiful beautiful yarn that came in the box. So I started another sweater. This is a boxy short sleeve sweater. I don't know what the neckline is going to be. It might just be very plain. Just did a little bit of a scoop sort of like this essential sweater. That may be how I create the neckline. But the bottom is already done, and I like what, how it looks with this particular yarn. This is the bottom of the sweater. I've put a ribbing along the bottom of this sweater. I hope you can see that. The sweater is not going to be very, very fancy, but I'll probably repeat the rib either at the neckline or at the bottom of the sleeves, or maybe both. I don't know how I'm going to do it just yet. But this does have a right and a wrong side. Look at the wrong side, and I don't know if you can see that. But the wrong side has one rib and the right side has three ribs together. Can you see that? There are three ribs together there. On the wrong side, there's one rib right there. So these are done obviously with back loop only, front loop only stitches. And then I'm going to make the sweater um, just with double crochet. I'm just going to do that because the yarn is a little bit busy. I like the way the colors look if I'm not doing a lot of fancy stitching. So that's what I'm going to do with that. I'm making it with 
an H hook, which is a 5.0 millimeter hook. This is my clover hook. That's what I'm making out of the knit crate box. I wanted to show you how it looked when it was stitched up. And so I have about three inches done and I'll be working on that this week. Hopefully I can um, make some really good progress with it. So that is living in my Joe Totes bag, the black and white. And I think I had most of my viewers really liked that bag. I'll show it to you again. This is one that I bought from her at Christmas time. And I love it. I love it. I love the colors. Red and black are two of my very favorite colors. So my knit crate project is living in this bag and I will show you the progress as I go along this week. Now, as you know, I've been working on a top down sweater. The top down sweater is coming right along. I'm excited about it. I'm trying to make the sweater so that no matter what size you are, you can make the sweater fit you. Now, I've already sort of mastered that on the bottom up sweaters. And most of you, and actually everybody who's written to me has said that the patterns are working great. So that was my focus with the bottom up sweaters. Now I'm trying the top down sweaters because they're just a totally different look. They're very versatile. You can do lots with them, just like you can the other type of sweater. But I'm trying to come up with a pattern where measurements matter and you can convert the measurements to stitches according to what yarn and what hook you're using. So that's very important. I want to be sure that what I put out there fits everybody because we're using measurements. We're not using stitch counts. And if you know me very well, you'll know that that's my focus. So I started a top-down sweater, and if you follow me on Instagram, you will see some of the pictures of it, and I'll show that to you here in just one moment. But first of all, because of that inspiration, I had received some yarn um, in the mail, and I ordered it about a week ago, and it had to come from a specialty shop. It's not specialty yarn, but it is a new yarn, and that's probably why it took a while for me to receive it. It is the Ice Cream Cotton Blend yarn, and here is a picture of the yarn band. Ice Cream Cotton Blend yarn, and this is by Lion Brand. This is a new line of yarn, and actually Creative Grandma has already done a review of it. I like it. I ordered it because of her review. So this is a number four yarn and it is made from 47 cotton 53 acrylic. So it's about half and half and it is machine washable and dryable. So I ordered two colors of the Lion brand. I ordered this color which is quite gorgeous. It's called Lemon and I thought I would make a yellow top for summer. I have four balls of this and on each ball 225 yards. So I have 900 yards of that and that should be fine. It should be plenty. It's a number four yarn and it's very, very soft. Very soft. Smells good too. <laughs> I don't usually smell my yarn, but it does smell pretty good. The other color I ordered was called chocolate and this is what the chocolate looks like. It's very much a, it's probably a stripy yarn. It's probably going to be stripy. But what I'm going to do with this, and see I ordered four balls of that as well. So what I'm going to do with this is a top-down sweater. And the sweater is, you know, I have the yoke done. <laughs> so I was kind of inspired by my other pattern that I'm working on. So this is the chocolate top-down yoke so far. And pretty soon I'll be stopping putting the chains under here to start the sleeves and then I'll move on and crochet the body. I thought this was really pretty but what I've done is I've used the chocolate here and then I've put a stripe here and this stripe is a different yarn and I reached into my stash and I found a light color that would go with the light color in the uh, the chocolate yarn. And I wanted to break that up a little bit. Um, didn't want to use the chocolate for the whole thing. So I decided to put a stripe along here like I did for my other one that I'll show you here in a minute. But I found this yarn, which is the cream color, the exact color that's in here. It's basically the same color. And this is Yarn Bee. And I found this in my stash. It's soft and sleek, low pill fiber right there. That's what it is. 
and it is 100% low pill acrylic. Low pill acrylic. The color number is ivory stripe. And what I found out after I was working with it for a while is that it has a very subtle stripe. And I'm going to open it up and show you the inside. It's a tiny bit darker than this. So when I was crocheting with it, and you can see it on here, I didn't even notice it until I was almost finished with the yoke and I thought, that doesn't look right. That looks a little different. So it's the light color here and then it eventually kind of morphs into this a little bit darker color. So now when I get to maybe another two or three rows, I'm going to start back with the chocolate. And that'll give um, the sweater a nice look and it won't be boring. And I can break it up a little bit with the solid color. So that's what I'm working on with the ice cream cotton blend yarn. I really like it. It's very, very soft and squishy. And I do like the colors. I'm not sure about these yet. We'll have to see how those look after they're crocheted because they're a little brighter. But you know what? Why not? Why not make a bright, beautiful top? You could wear that under a blue jean jacket or wear it with a pair of jeans. For summer, you could wear it with a black skirt to church. There are all kinds of ways that you can wear this color. You don't have to wear a whole body full of the yellow. Just make the top kind of bright, and then uh, your pants or skirt could be um, black or navy blue or blue jean color, whatever you want to do with that. So we'll see where that goes. I should be starting that fairly soon because it's up in my spring makes section of my storage bins over there on the wall. So that is one of the things I'm going to make for spring. This chocolate is sort of for spring. It's a little bit before spring, but I'll probably make this with um, short sleeves. I'll probably make it with short sleeves or maybe three quarter sleeves. I haven't decided yet. I usually don't decide that until I'm almost done with the, the, the garment and then I'll go, Meh, I really don't want long sleeves in that or that has to have long sleeves. It just depends on how it looks on me when I try it on and if I really want to add sleeves to it, I will. So I might, I will probably, I'm sure I will have plenty of yarn to put longer sleeves in this or I could just put elbow length sleeves. There are a myriad of things that you can do with your sleeves. So I'll be deciding that later. But right now, that's as far as I've gotten on this particular project. So now let's talk about another project that I have in the works. This is my top-down, original top-down sweater. And if you're following me on Instagram, you will have seen this sweater and the progress that I've made with it, which I'm really excited about. I'm making it from two comfy cotton blends. One is the, uh, these are both number three, by the way. These are number three yarns. And this is the comfy cotton blend in the colorway Ocean Breeze. This is Ocean Breeze. I showed this last week. I wanted to show that again for those of you who might have missed it. This is the comfy cotton blend that I'm using for the contrast color on my sweater. For the main color of the sweater, I'm using a white whipped cream comfy cotton then the yarn band has fallen off of this, but that's what it is. It's the whipped cream comfy cotton blend yarn. And let me show you what I've done so far on this. I've really pursued this and it is coming right along. Now it's becoming a little bit heavy. So this may be a short sleeve sweater. I don't know because we're coming up into spring and we don't want to make anything that's going to be so heavy. We don't want to wear it in the springtime. So let me just show you what I've gotten done so far. This is the main body of the sweater. Now I have put the chains around the bottom of the yoke. So you first make the yoke, which is about this far. Then you add chains that connect the bottom of the front yoke to the back yoke. Then you continue around and what I did was I did a few rows of the blue under the arm and then I continued on with the whipped cream color for the body of the sweater. It will be white from here down. So that's how I'm planning this. Now the sleeves will be blue. When I start the sleeve I'll crochet in the round right here and it'll be blue to right about here and then I will change to the white or maybe put a white cuff on the sleeve. It just depends like I did, like I told you on the last project, it depends on where I am when I 
get to that point and I'll decide if I want long sleeves, short sleeves, three-quarter sleeves, fitted sleeves, boxy sleeves. You know, there are lots of decisions to make when you're creating a pattern. But I do want to create one that y'all can use that will fit you no matter how small or how large you are. So this is the opening. I want to show this to you. This is the opening for the arm. What I did with this is I created a boxy sweater. I put a very long chain between the two yokes. And so now I have this large opening for my sleeve, which is fine. I'm just going to crochet in the round. I'll probably decrease quite a bit at first and get the sleeve manageable to my arm. And then I will either put a cuff on it or I'll continue on down to the wrist. It just depends. I have plenty of comfy cotton yarn, so it's not an issue with how much yarn I have. It's how I want to design the sweater. So I'm excited that I've gotten this far. I like the blue. I think that's a really nice uh, break in the white sweater. And it will also make it a lot more coordinated if you wear it with blue jeans, with a blue jean sh skirt, or with a navy knit pencil skirt, something like that. It would look really, really nice, and you can even you can wear a shirt under it if you want to. Maybe a navy collared shirt would be pretty with this. I don't know. You may not want to wear a shirt with it at all, but I'm making this for you. I want you all to have a basis for a top-down sweater that you can make uh, out of a number three yarn. So that's where I'm going with this, and even you might even be able to move to a four yarn or a five because the, the blouse that I'm making from the... Um, cotton blend ice cream yarn by Lime Brand is a number four so that will be a you know a different size sweater and maybe a different even a different style I don't know but I'm working on the two simultaneously so that uh, hopefully I'll finish them both about the same time and we can compare notes and see where we find ourselves after we finish the two sweaters so two top-down sweaters in the works. My fourth big project is my Knit Crate Titmouse Sweater. Last Friday, I hadn't gotten very far with this. This is what I'm making it from. Y'all have seen this a hundred times on my channel. This is the Knit Crate Knitology yarn and in the Titmouse colorway. I love those colors. Beige, blue, light gray, and yellow. Beautiful, beautiful colors together. And I have decided to make a bottom-up sweater out of that and that's fingering yarn so it's it's very very small and I'm using an H hook on this as well and I'm making it um, in half double crochet so it'll be hopefully tight enough to where I won't have to wear an undershirt or a camisole a tank top or whatever underneath it it should be wearable right on my skin which is kind of where I'm going with this I made a v-neck sweater and this is what it looks like I have the v-neck done already and I have not put the trim on it and the trim will probably be at least an inch wide so that will bring the neck up quite a bit right now it's right about the bottom of the neck is right here and that's not too low when I put an inch band on it it should come up around sort of like this only just a little bit lower in the front and then for the sleeves well actually let me show you the bottom the bottom of the sweater is done in a mesh stitch part way up. I think I did about an inch at the bottom, then I did a mesh, and then I've taken the sweater up to the neckline. I've sewn the sweater together. The, sw the sweater is sewn together at the neck, if you can see that, at the shoulders. There it is, sewn together. Now I have started a sleeve, and it's going to be a short sleeve. I stitched about this far, and then I started the mesh, and the mesh will match the bottom of the sweater. So it's turning out really pretty. I've done some decreasing here to keep the sleeve from being too boxy. I don't want that. This is not a boxy sweater. You could make it a boxy sweater very, very easily just by increasing the width of the front and back fabric. But right now, this is the sleeve so far, and I plan to put several more rows on here so that it comes down, you know, about halfway down my the top part of my arm so it's not going to be a cap sleeve it's going to have sleeves in it and like I said I have decreased quite a bit I don't know if you can see that but up here is where the sleeve starts down here is where it ends and it's quite a bit 
more narrow here at the bottom of the sleeve than it is at the start of the sleeve right there. I guess you can see that from right there to right here. I have done several decreases on it. If you look at this, um, I marked them with my stitch markers. So you can see where I've marked the decreases. Most of them are at the top of the shoulder. And I'll tell you why that is. When you make a bottom up sweater and the fabrics are square basically, even though the front might have a neckline, it, they sew together square. So when you take the sleeve out, it's going to have a pretty good size opening. So what I do is I decrease at the top and a lot of people decrease at the bottom, but actually the top is where the sleeve tends to go out too far. So I decrease at the top to pull that sleeve down just a little bit right below the shoulder, right as where the fabric ends, right there. So I don't want it to flip out there and then be decreased. I want it to decrease at the very beginning, right there at the top, right there at the top. So that's the reason that I decrease at the top of the sleeve instead of at the bottom. And it's very easy to decrease that way because you are crocheting the sleeve right onto the fabric and you're not setting the sleeve in and that makes it much more difficult to decrease in my book. Maybe you like to do it that way, that's fine. You can certainly do my patterns like that too if you want. You can sew the underarm seam. You can crochet the sleeve in in the round. You can certainly do that. I just think it's easier to lay it out flat you can actually get your measurement perfect that way and then you crochet back and forth till you finish the sleeve. You sew the entire underarm seam together and the side seam as well. So it's all in one piece. That way you make one seam and you're done. And you make these two little seams. It's really very easy. I am making this with an H hook like I said. This is fingering weight yarn. It is very very small. But you know after I got going it wasn't so bad. So I, I did quite a bit of work on this this weekend. I spent a lot of time in my recliner for many reasons, but I was there and I have to be productive when I'm sitting down I, or watching TV or anything like that. I want to be productive. So I have this much done on the sleeve. It shouldn't take me long at all to put the other sleeve in because it's not going to be a very long sleeve. Although I have plenty of yarn. I have this hank and one full other hank that's been uh, wound up. I have those two left and I'm not going to need near as much as I thought I would. I'm still working on the second hank and I've done this much on the sweater. The front, the back, and, and almost one whole sleeve. So it looks like right now I'm going to need about 900 yards of fingering to make a short sleeve sweater. And it's not boxy. If it was boxy, I might need a thousand yards. And I would probably buy a thousand yards of fingering yarn in order to make a sweater and have a sweater quantity to make a summer sweater or maybe a three quarter sleeve sweater out of fingering yarn. And in a pretty tight knit. It, this is not open, so you can't really see through it yet. Let me just show you. I don't know if you can see. You can't really see my hand back there. I'm moving it back and forth. So it's going to be, I'm hoping, dense enough so that I can wear it without an undershirt. And honestly, I, I might want to wear a tank top under it anyway just because it might itch. But I don't know that. It's an experiment. My whole life is an experiment. <laughs> I'm having fun. And so that is all I have on the projects. To so those four projects that I'm working on. I hope you enjoyed that. Today is Monday giveaway day and I've been in my craft room. At the beginning of this video I played the video of my craft room project and my blocking project of the essential sweater. So I saw some things that I would like to give away and they are all bagged up and ready to go. So let me start with giveaway winner number one, what they will receive. Last year I started a shawl, a rectangle shawl made from shawl and a ball. This is the balance of the shawl and the ball. It's not tangled, it just doesn't have the ball band on it anymore and it's actually okay. You could probably wind it by hand. I don't see a problem with that at all. But I, I, I don't even know the color of this. It's, it's green and beige. It's beautifully done. It's a sparkle yarn. I know you can see that. It's a sparkle yarn and there's green and beige in there. And I just don't want to finish it. I, I'm over it. I don't want to finish it. 
and I put it away and now it's going to belong to one of my viewers because I'm giving it away on Friday. This is what it looks like. It's green to start on one end and then it moves to the brown. See how it moves into the brown and then back into the green. Now this is where I stopped and this is where you would continue working with this green part of the shawl and the ball. So it should balance itself out. There is about maybe a foot and a half of green on one side before it turns into the brown. So you would want to take this other side and add to this point about a foot and a half. You'd want to add about maybe uh, 15 inches or something like that in the green. This is done in a mesh pattern. It is a very simple pattern. I'm sure I used a J hook. So you can start there. So here's that. You can actually put fringe on it if you want to. Um, you can add colors to it if you want to, but I say it would probably be as long as I am tall. That's my guess, because it's pretty long now. So when you add a foot and a half to it, you'll probably have a five and a half foot shawl. So that is going to give away winner number one. Giveaway winner number two will win this project that is partially finished. This was the scalloped shawl uh, with homespun lion brand yarn and it came right off their website. It was free pattern. I printed it off and I bought the gemstones color. And let me show that to you. It's quite beautiful. And this is how much I've done on the shawl. I started it right here and I have gotten this far on the shawl. If you can see that, it's done in a little bit of a circular pattern. It's got little points here. It's quite beautiful. I like the way it came out, but it's done in homespun yarn and I'm kind of over that and it's really heavy. I don't really need it. So I'm going to send this to somebody and let them finish it. Or you can frog it out and use the homespun yarn. But this is where I ended up with almost a whole ball of homespun already in this piece of the shawl. There are two other skeins of yarn to go with it, which is what it takes. It takes three skeins of yarn to make the shawl. And this is the color of the homespun. It is gorgeous. It's purple and pink. And I almost didn't want to give it away, but you know what? I'm not going to wear this because I have several shawls that are done in these colors. And... Frankly, I don't have time to make it right now. But winter's almost over, so I thought, you know what? I could give this to a viewer. They could put it in their stash, or they could finish it and give it away for Christmas next year, or whatever they want to do. But it's in a bag, and it's ready to go. So I'll also send the pattern with that. It's already printed off. It's a free pattern, so I'm not giving away something I didn't buy because it doesn't cost anything. So I'm going to put this in the bag, and that will go out to giveaway winner number two. Giveaway winner number three will receive the Serenity Draped Vest by Jess of Make and Do Crew. You might have heard of her. Um, she comes up with some really cute projects. This is a beginner project, so it's very, very easy to do. It is made with a J-hook. I made it with a J-hook. The small medium calls for two skeins of yarn. I'm working on the first skein, and here is the first rectangle. It's made in two rectangles, and then you sew them together in a certain fashion. So this is the first rectangle. It's very, very long, but it's not all that terribly wide. I don't think you have to make it really wide. So it looks like there's treble crochets in this. It's been a while since I worked on it. I remember buying it and I bought the shawl on the ball and I thought it was so beautiful and it is, it's quite beautiful. So this is what I have. I'm working on this shawl on the ball right here. And this is called Lotus Blossom. Very, very beautiful. I have two skeins of that. And the first skein, I just started the, the project with this um, shawl and the ball here. They're both the same. I will send you the pattern if you want it, or you can frog it out or cut it off and start something new with it. Not a problem. But that is the Serenity Draped Vest. You, but it's very, very simple. And you sew it together very easily. It's two rectangles and you sew them together and this is what it looks like when you get them sewn together. You have um, an opening on one end and that's where your shoulders go there and there. So it's very very simple, not hard at all. Hopefully I'll be back on Wednesday. Not sure about that. It might be Friday, but be sure to put a comment down 
in the comment section in order to be in the running for one of these three giveaways. The two shawls, the three shawls, actually, there are three shawls going out this week, partially made, and I can move them out of my craft room and to someone who will love them and maybe finish them or just use the yarn, however you want to do it. So that will be on Friday. That's when the giveaway winners will be announced on Friday on my regular video time. On Wednesday, I might be back. It just depends on how busy I am this week. But if you don't see me, join me again on Friday when we find out what's on the hook.